With these two awesome machines, you can harvest just about every crop that's in the game, except for grapes and for olives. So why not try out a mod that'll plant all those crops for you? If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to hit like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. What we have here today is the Kinsey Multi Fruit Planter Pack. And as you can see, I've got two different versions. Easiest way to find this mod is to go down to your mods and DLC section in your store and then go across until you see the Kinsey Multi Fruit Planter Pack. Now, Chris S and Riley S have done an amazing job adding some additional features to these pieces of equipment right here. First thing that you're going to notice is that you now have the premium expansion. Those are going to be the carrots, the parsnips, and the red beets and everything else, right? So if you get the regular 3665 or the 4905, you're gonna have those additional crops along with everything else that is like a row crop, including maybe some grass and some um, oilseed radish. But if you want even more crops, you need to come over here to the unrealistic. Now this is gonna add your potatoes. It's gonna add sugarcane and it's gonna add poplar. Yes, all of those crops, you are now gonna be able to plant with just this one piece of equipment. It's only $72,000 too, $72,600. That is an absolutely insane price, guys. And there's also something really cool about it. As you can see over here, it only holds $39.53 on the capacity of your seeds. Now this one's $50,000. Over here on the 4905, it holds $74.63. Yeah, 65,000 liters. It's absolutely insane. That's gonna be a combination between your seeds and your fertilizer though, all right? So keep that in mind, but still, insane amount of capacity and it goes 30 miles an hour here in your configurations there's nothing really that you need to do i mean it's already going to be 50,000 liters it's already going to be 30 miles an hour if you're on the unrealistic setting here just your brands you could actually make this match any of the other primary major brands that you want to fent john deere kubota massey new holland you've got kinsey you could leave it as that you got lizard case gloss i mean anything you want to do there your warning markers so you've got a couple different options here what you could do is you could do a us or the eu and then on your beacons i mean these are just your standard beacons if you want to have them in the field that way you can see whenever the worker is having an issue uh hub color frame color all those things tons of different colors what i like the most about this is you've got the kinsey the blue the white and the gray and the red so all four kinsey colors right here i absolutely love this you can make this thing look like it's supposed to be in the field with the blue or you can add it red or white i mean we all like blue right now one thing that you need to keep in mind is that it does say that this only requires 175 horsepower to pull it but you're not going to get 30 miles an hour so what you're going to need to do is find yourself a really nice tractor that goes really really fast might i recommend the case ih right here this is the 400 by mac trucker 921 or the John Deere 4755 by Ridiculous Dominic. Either one of these is going to get the job done for you. 30 miles an hour is not going to be a problem. And you don't have to use the special trick that I've showed you guys before, taking a look at how to use the drawbar. No, these things just do it regular. So we're taking a look here at the 3665 first. And as you can see down at the bottom, I've got almost 50,000 liters of product in here. Been doing a little bit of planting, but it's still showing 99%. So it's super easy. Hold your L1 and just start toggling through all the different crops. As you can see, like literally everything is in here. I want to plant, plant propellers. Perfect. All I got to do, hire a worker, let them go. And as you can see here really soon, we are going to be at that 30 miles an hour. Now it takes a little bit to get there, but it is possible. It's absolutely possible. It's got to be flat ground though. If you get a little bit of a hill on this tractor with this combo right here, it's going to be, it's going to take a bit. But if you want to go just a little bit bigger, I recommend the 4905 here and the John Deere 4755. I've got red beets in here right now. Let's go and switch this over to carrots. We're going to go into hire a worker. You guys are going to see how quickly this gets up to speed. We're already doing 25 miles an hour and then 30 miles an hour. Yeah, no problem at all. This thing is absolutely insane, guys. Super wide width, 18.2 meters on this. And yes, this is doing the additional crops from the DLC. You don't need to hill it at all. We already have seen in previous videos. You don't have to do that. It's just not going to get you a fertilization state. But if you put some fertilizer in here, then it's not going to be a problem. You come back one more time and fertilize. Or if you fertilize before, then you're done after this. All you gotta do now is roll. And I don't think I've mentioned this before, but this is a direct drill. So as you can see, I've got red beets in there and we are putting carrots over top of it. Now, one thing about this, the worker doesn't really like to do that. So if you accidentally put the wrong crop down, you may have to go back yourself. 
I'm not able to use a worker right now, um, but I absolutely can put this down myself and take off. Now, another thing, the icon in the top left, I'm not sure exactly what's going on, but it's showing it super, super high up there. Not quite right, but it's still working. So you might be wondering, why am I just standing around with 12 harvesters spread out throughout this field? Well, guys, today we're going to be running a test on bees to see exactly how the hives work. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to hit like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. So the first thing I want to show you here on this test is that I've got 12 different plots of canola planted right here. You can see that it is canola. It's yield bonus 100%, fertilized 100%. That means we are going to get absolutely everything that we can out of this. Now that we know there are three crops that you're going to be able to get your extra yield out of if you run with bees. That's going to be canola, potatoes, and sunflowers. And the next thing I want to show you here is exactly how that layout is set up. So right here in the middle I'm, is where I'm going to put my hive at. Then I've got two different dots going in the four different directions. Each one of these dots is 75 meters away from the center point right here. So what that means is that I'm able to go out to 150 meters. Now, the biggest beehive that we've got, it says that it's 150 meters. I don't know if that's across, if that's one direction. I don't know if this only goes forward. I don't know if it goes behind. I don't know if it goes this way and not this way. And that's why we've got this set up exactly like this. So the first thing I need to do though, is go ahead and figure out exactly how much canola I'm gonna get off of each one of these plots without any beehive here. And to find out those values, I've gotta go ahead and sleep a few days and then harvest every single one of these plots. One really good thing about doing this test on four fields map is that the crops only take two days to grow. I got everything done here and I'm going to go ahead and show you guys a little bit of a chart here and explain exactly what's going on. All right. So as you can see right here, I've got an X kind of looking pattern, more like a plus sign. And right in the middle, it says hive. Now on this one, I didn't have any hive put down at all. But if we start going north, you can see that 410, 432, and then 441. Those are the yields. Now, the reason they're not exactly the same is because when I was creating these little plots, I, I didn't get them exactly the same size, guys. They're maybe just a little bit longer, like maybe a, a yard, two or a meter, two meters a little bit longer than the other ones. So I did the best that I could to get them the exact same size, but unfortunately they're not. That's not the important part. The important part is if we see an increase whenever we start putting down our hives. All right, so on the bottom, you could see 458, 414, and 433. Off to the west is 439, 436, and 426. And off to the east is 436, 402, and 446. Now, this was canola, 100% yield bonus. So everything was done exactly as it should have been. And no hive placed in the middle again. For the next part of the test, I've gone ahead and reset everything back to where it was before. You can see right here that I've got canola. It's 100% yield bonus and it's fertilized 100%. This is exactly the way it was whenever we started our first portion of this test. What I need to do now is go ahead and put down a beehive right here in the middle. The way I'm going to do that is come down to construction. I'm going to go across to animals, go down to bees, and then we're going to pick this bad boy right here, the Beehive 33 Langstroth Hives. So I'm going to go ahead and just put this right here in the middle as best as I can. There we go. Perfect. And I'm going to go ahead and also put down one of these honey collection points. All right. We're going to go and just put that right there. Now, as you can see, the bees are already coming out, so they're good to go. It's centered up right there and right there. And it's also centered up left to right as well. Now, the one thing that I'm not really sure about on this, or actually two things is, are the bees only going to pollinate this side? I don't know if anything's going to happen back here at all. And then you can also see when I get close to this down at the bottom right-hand corner, you can see that the range is 150 meters. Now I'm not sure if that's 150 meters in just one direction or if that's a total of that direction and that direction, which means that it's only 75 in one direction. So that's why I've gone ahead and put these plots here. Now these plots, these are gonna be picked up absolutely, I mean, no problem, right? They're super close. And we're not gonna have an issue. These second plots that I've got right here, here on the outside, this little area right here on this edge here is 75 meters from that right there. So that means that this whole area should get the extra pollination and the little bit of extra yield boost. And then the same thing happening all the way out here. I've got these plots set it just inside the 150. So 150 is right here on this outside edge. So that whole plot should get 
uh, fertilized and are not fertilized but pollinated and should be able to get that little bit of an extra boost now once again canola potatoes and sunflowers are the only crops that we're going to be able to do this with let me go ahead and sleep over here at the house for a couple days and then we're going to come back and take a look at this data all right it's now time to go ahead and start harvesting and one thing i want to look at first is when i walk over here I don't see any type of yield bonus at all. It still says 100% and 100% fertilized. So that's not giving me any indication. I'm actually going to have to get in the harvesters here and fire them up and get this harvested. All right, I've got all four of the first plots right here harvested. Let's go ahead and take a look here at the data. And as you can see right here, this is the original values. I've eliminated everything else from around the outside. And what I want to do is actually first look at the very bottom one because that is the one directly in front of what we've got going on. And as you can see, the value is 458 liters. So now what we're looking for is somewhere around a 2% increase. So here we go, 469 liters. So if you do the quick math on that, 458 liters times 1.02, which is 2%, is gonna give you 467.16. So there must've been a little bit of rounding with the 458. And we got 469 now, so we got an extra liter out of it. Maybe a little bit more rounding is going on as well. So I say that 2% pollination boost right there, absolutely. You're going to get 2 more percent by having these honeybees here on your farm. Now, the next one that I want to take a look at is going to be the red one right here, and that is to the north. So the original value was 410 liters, and after we put down the beehive, it's 420 so yeah, that works in that direction too. So now we know that forwards and backwards, you're going to get pollination. So it seems like this thing is at least going in two directions. Let's check out east and west as well. And here you go. You could see both of them up there right now. Originally on the east, 436 to 447. And on the west, 439 to 450. And what that data shows is that it's going to go in all four directions, not just one or the other. Now, the next major thing that we've got to get figured out is exactly how big is that 150? Is that range considered a radius so that it goes 150 in one direction and another direction and like all the way around 150? Or is that a diameter and it's only 75 meters in one direction? So let's go and get the rest of these harvested right here and then we're going to find out. All right, for this slide right here, I went ahead and added back the original values that we had on the outside. What I want to look at now is the middle plot that we had on each direction right here so on the north we originally had 432 east 402 south 414 and west 436 now you can see that on the north we've added 10 more we've got 442 on the east we actually have nine more so it's 411 on the south we have nine more as well 423 and on the west we have nine there as well at 445 so for me that is another two percent increase on each one of those plots right there so that's pretty cool. 75 meters out in each direction, you're still going to get the full 2% bonus to your yield from the pollination. All right, so now that we know that it goes out to the 75 meter section, let's go ahead and take a look here at the data for the 150 meter plots that I've got. So as you can see right here, these are the original values, 441, 446, 433, and 426. And here's what it is after we did the Bs, 444, 450, 436, and 430. Very interesting thing here is it's not the full 2%. You know, you're only gaining three or four on each one of these. So it's really interesting, like out there at the 150, it's like, we're still going to give you some, but we're not going to give you the full. It's somewhere around three quarters of a percent to 1% is what I'm seeing right here whenever I do the math. So very, very interesting there. I'm not quite sure why, unless you're just getting a little bit of residual from the other. Like it's guaranteed that maybe you're gonna get it out there at the 75 meter, which if you look at it from both directions, that's a full 150 diameter range. And then you're just gonna get a little bit more out here on the outside edges. I'm not quite sure, but it's pretty cool. Kind of bet that you're going to get the 75 meter out, so 150 diameter, and then anything beyond that is just going to be bonus. Well, hopefully I answered all your questions, but maybe I just actually created a couple more. I'm really curious as to what is going on out there at the far edges with the 150 meter plots. But I mean, I think either way, if you put this kind of in the middle of your field, you know it's going to work. And if you put it on the edge of your field, I mean, you're really only 
getting half of the benefit of it that you potentially could. So maybe try and find some spots where it's like between fields and you're going to grow canola on both sides or in both fields, or you got sunflowers on one, canola on the other, or maybe potatoes, or maybe you make some islands out in the middle of your fields to put your bees in and you do it strategically so that you can get that 2% boost over the whole field. In this video, I'm going to show you step-by-step -step how to get 100% yield out of your sugarcane harvests. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to hit like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. The first thing I want to do is go over the status here of this field. As you can see in the bottom right-hand corner, I don't have any yield information, and that's because this field has just been harvested. Now, sugarcane is going to regrow for you, and it's going to take eight months until it's ready to harvest. Now, the first thing I want to test out is what does mulching do here for my yield? So I'm going to go ahead and take my Case IH and this awesome six meter mulcher right here. And I'm actually going to mulch this bottom half of the field. And the reason I'm doing this is because in base game, you're going to get two and a half percent. Now, I know it's not a lot, but it is a little bit and it helps you get to that 100 percent yield. I also have plowing, lime and weeds turned off. So I don't need to do any of those three processes to be able to get those bonuses here on this field. I got the mulching done on the portion that I wanted to. And as you can see, there's no need for rolling and the field has no fertilizer right now. But just to be sure, I'm going to go ahead and roll here this first couple passes on the day of the harvest. Now, I know that it says it doesn't need it, but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway and see if we can get any type of change here in the status. So it is down. You can see that it's actually doing something. It's engaged. And you can see right here that there's no change in the texture. I didn't get anything out of it. It's not showing any different look here. And if I take a look at my map, nothing happened here either. I mean, it still says not rolling, which I didn't expect anything, but I just wanted to be sure. And the last thing I'm going to do here on the day of harvest is I'm going to go ahead and put down some fertilizer. And as you can see, it is putting down a fertilizer status. If I come down here and get rid of my mulching, then you're going to see that it's actually doing it there as well. I have now slept a day, so it is now the day after harvest. And as you can see down in the bottom right-hand corner, I now have a yield bonus of 75%, and it's 50% fertilized on this half over here. Let's go take a look here at the other half that actually had the mulching done. I don't have anything, guys. That means that I completely got rid of the crop whenever we mulched. So do not mulch your sugar cane if you want it to actually regrow. We'll take a look here in the menu as well, and it still does not show that it needs any rolling done to it at all. The mulch portion, once again, does not have anything growing in it at all. I'll go ahead and confirm that right here. As you can see in the growing status, I have nothing down on the bottom portion of that field. There is nothing there, guys. I'm going to hold off on rolling because the menu doesn't say that it actually needs it right now. But the next time I do, it's going to be on this portion of the field right here. But what I am going to do is go ahead and put down a second layer of fertilizer. You can see here in the menu, it went ahead and took that second stage of fertilizer. Now, once again, this is the next day after harvest. We are now in October, so that means this is the second day or month after harvest. And as you can see, the yield bonus is now 98%. I don't know what I need to do except rolling, but it doesn't show me that I need to actually roll down here. It's still showing 98% as well. So I'm going to go ahead and roll this section down here. It doesn't tell me that it needs it. But we're going to test it out. I'm going to leave the middle section right there alone and not have anything done to it at all. We're going to see exactly what happens here. I got a feeling it might crush it and it's not. All right. So that's good news. All right. So I just got done rolling. And as you can see, it's still at 98%. I don't know what I'm going to be able to do to get that extra 2% though. Day number three is here. And once again, it's still at 98%. Doesn't matter which section of the field I stand in. It's going to show 98% yield bonus and 100% fertilized. I look at the menu, it's still not showing me that it needs rolling. I've gone ahead and turned off the fertilization just to make sure that it's not covering it up. And yeah, it's just not there at all. It is now day number eight. And as you can see, it is time to harvest this. I can now remove the foliage. Yield bonus is still only 98% fertilized 100. Guys, it doesn't matter what you do. You're not going to be able to get that 100% yield bonus because you can't mulch it. And it never tells you that you can actually roll it. So 98 is the best you're going to be able to get. It's actually 97 and a half because rolling gives you two and a half percent. So yeah, 97 and a half percent is the most you could get whenever you regrow your sugar cane. It's going to take eight months from the time that you harvested originally. So it is one month extra compared to if you're just putting it in the ground. So if you're trying to go for a super fast, as quick as you can, 
may want to re reseed it, but it is expensive. It takes quite a lot. So to recap, do not mulch your sugar cane. You're going to want to fertilize it the day of and the day after you harvest, and there's no need to roll it. With the addition of the premium DLC, there are now 19 crops that you can plant, fertilize, and harvest on your farms here for Farming Simulator 22. But which one is the most profitable? If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to hit like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. There's quite the debate on whether or not soybeans or cotton or carrots or chaff is the most profitable crop that you could have here in the Farming Simulator 22. Today, we're going to be taking a look at exactly which one that is. Now, I know there's a lot of other videos already taking a look at this, including one that I made two years ago. But that was before the premium expansion came out with our new crops, carrots, parsnips, and red beets. So I wanted to go ahead and add those in to the new spreadsheet that I've been working on here recently and show you guys exactly which one it is. But I got a little bit of a twist this time. I'm going to be taking a look at it per month without seasons because there are quite a few players that still play without seasonal cycles turned on. We're going to be taking a look at it that way. And the reason I'm taking a look at it without seasonal cycles is because in a 12 month period, the only crop that you're going to get to cut more than once is going to be your grass. And that proves to be very, very profitable. Um, carrots are also really, really profitable. But let's go ahead and take a look at the spreadsheet here that I've got and see exactly which one is going to be the most profitable per month. The first column here on the spreadsheet is going to be the crop. And you notice that it doesn't have just the base game 19 crops. It also has a couple other ones. We've got sugar beet cut put in here. I've got our grass silage. I've got corn silage. And I've even got hay in here as well. The next column you see right here is the crop yield at 100%. That means that the yield bonus is at 100%. That means you're doing everything that you can. You put lime down, you're fertilizing twice, you're getting the weeds out of there, you're plowing it. Everything that you can do, mulching and rolling included, are factored into the yield values that you see right here. The next column you can see that that is the amount of straw yield that you're going to get with each one of the three crops. It's going to be 73,600. Now, these values are based off of one hectare of ground. So if you've got a field that's 3.5 hectares big, we'll just multiply these uh, values right here by 3.5. The next column you see right here is the peak easy crop price. The way that I got these is I went in and looked at the peak price fluctuation value for each one of these crops. And to go along with that, the peak easy straw price is next. And when you take the crop yield, you divide it by a thousand and then multiply it by that easy price right there, you're going to get the gross crop revenue. As you can see for wheat, it's 21,769. Now these values may change slightly depending on what your peak price is. At the time that I made this video, these were my values. I've gone back and looked at it a couple other times and they kind of fluctuate a little bit, kind of depending on the map or depending on a little bit of other economic factors that I've got. If I've got a a mod installed like fixed crop prices, they could be even a little bit more than that. But this is a really good baseline right here to show you in comparison to all of them together. Do the same thing for your gross straw revenue, and then you add them all together, and that is your total gross revenue. So as you can see for wheat, it's actually 32,736 because you're going to combine your 21,769 from your crop and your 10,966 from your straw. Now, fortunately, only wheat, barley, and oats have straw. All the other ones are exactly the same all the way down. And one of the first things that you're going to see is, holy cow, poplar is very, very profitable, but it takes a really long time to grow. The next column here, you can see the growth rate in months, and that's going to be 13 months for poplar. So it's actually got to be divided out by 13 instead of like something like oats where it's only four. And yeah, in a 12 month cycle, you are only going to harvest these one time. But if you're playing without seasons, then you're actually some of these crops are able to grow two times in the amount of time that it takes you to grow one of the other ones. So you're getting double revenue off that crop. than if you just planted, say, oh, I don't know, canola, canola is eight months, right? But if you plant oats, then you're actually getting twice the amount of money in the same amount of time. And that's where this next column comes in revenue per month. So what I've done is I've taken the total gross revenue and divided it out by the growth rate in months. So for wheat, I've got 32,736. That's total revenue on the wheat and the straw. And I've divided that by seven months. So per month, I'm actually only going to be bringing in about $4,677. You can see for oats, it's 8,245. So I mean, almost half the amount of growth time almost doubles, right? I mean, if we're truly looking at doubling, it's about a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars less 
but it's actually a lot more money when you factor in that it only takes four months. So if I'm trying to make a lot of money in 12 months, I mean, I don't want to grow a crop that's going to take eight months to grow because I'm only going to get to harvest it once. I'm going to want to plant something maybe three times or maybe twice. Maybe I'm going to want to plant soybeans or corn. You know, and as you look down the list, you see a lot of these other ones that are like 20,000, 10,000, right? Those are really, really profitable. But how do you know where your normal crops fall at in the scope of comparing all of them together? All I've done here on this next slide is I've gone ahead and added conditional formatting. What that does is just, if it's a green cell, it's on the top end of the revenue that you're going to be able to generate. And if it's a red one, it's on the very low side. And I would probably stay away from that if you're trying to make money. And right? if you need this for productions, that's a little bit different. But if you're trying to make money really quickly, I don't want to go with the green ones or maybe the yellow ones. And as you can see, it's Poplar coming in at 20,833. Yes, it takes a very long time to grow, but it's the most profitable crop per month if you're not running seasonal cycles. Right behind that is going to be your corn silage coming in at 20,427, and then carrots at 20,251. And don't think the corn silage is the only one that pays out really well. Grass silage does too. You're going to be able to do that every three months. So you've got to cut it four times instead of just three times. So you're not making as much money by doing quite a bit more work in reality. So I know that everybody likes soybeans. Guys, that's nowhere near the top of the list. I don't even think it's in the middle because it's one of those peachy colored ones. I mean, that's not really that great. I mean, I would rather have a yellow one over any of them that are tinted a little bit red. I mean, just straight up, stay away from canola and sunflowers. They don't pay out very well at all. And I think a lot of these crops that pay out really well, traditionally, we haven't really used them a whole lot because it's not an easy way to be able to plant or to harvest these crops. But with the introduction of some very awesome harvesters that we've got recently from Mark Thor and Chris S and Riley S, I mean, it's made harvesting these crops a lot, lot easier, guys. So you definitely want to go check out my fast farming playlist. I've got a lot of videos in there showing you all the new equipment, how you're going to be able to do it a lot faster. We've got planting tips and tricks in there as well. Definitely want to go check out that playlist if you're wanting to use these right here. Now, towards the bottom of this list, there are some crops that are also going to be able to be regrown. You've got sugarcane, you've got your grass, and you've got grapes, olives, and poplar. They all regrow without you having to replant them, so you don't have the cost of seed associated with the initial investment again. So the regrowth rate in months on those is going to be anywhere from eight months on sugarcane to three months for your grass or you got six months on your grapes, fives on your olives, and 14 on your poplar. So what's the regrowth revenue per month on a regrow? So if you want to leave it in the ground and let it go again, well, as you can see right here, for sugarcane, it drops off just a little bit. Instead of being 12,118, it's now 10,603, and it turns it into a yellow cell because now you're taking an extra month to be able to do this. Now, I don't think that that loss is enough to say hey i need to replant the whole thing because it's going to cost you as much in seed and you know all the other things that you need to do to it for that initial planting as what you're going to be maybe losing here by going the extra month so after looking at this i say that poplar is going to be the absolutely best crop that you could plant if you're looking to make the most revenue per month now, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't do any of the other crops. I mean, you absolutely should. Harvesters are great fun. There's lots of really cool ones that you could use, whether you want to play realistically, you want to play unrealistically. There's a ton of them out there, guys. So don't think that you have to do poplars if you want to make your farm grow really, really fast. I mean, do the other ones too, just if you're in a crunch and you need a little bit of money kind of quick and you don't want to cheat it in with the government subsidy side, then take a look at this sheet right here that I've got and maybe pick one of them that's in the yellow. The Colossus 9000 is one of the best fast farming mods for Farming Simulator 22. But I hear you. You want to use one of the other mods available on Mod Hub? Do you still want to go fast? Let me show you how. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to hit like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications. A lot of you guys have been asking, how do we make the other harvesters go fast as well instead of having to use the Colossus all the time? There's a ton of other great mods out there from John Deere, Case, New Holland. You got some Fence. I mean, there's all kinds of really awesome mods available on the Mod Hub. How do you make them go fast? And no, Chris didn't come out with some brand new harvesters or anything like that. Really, all you need is just the header right here, and you're going to be able to attach that to any of these harvesters and let it go fast. Easiest way to find this mod is to go down to your mods and DLC section in your store, 
come across to the Colossus Harvesters pack here. And then once you get in here, you can see that you've got some different options for your headers. Now you can see that you've got a Titan header and then a Titan header Unreal. The really cool thing about the first one is that it's only 10 miles an hour, or you can go 60 miles an hour if you want to on the second one. You're doing corn. Hey, you got those options there too. 10 miles an hour or 60 miles an hour. Or if you want to be able to drag your header around anywhere on your farm, get the Titan Draper right here. This one is 10 miles an hour. This one is 60 miles an hour. Other than that, it, it's all the other really cool stuff as part of this Harvester's pack. But this is the important part right here. So let's get in here and take a look at some configurations. On this Draper header right now, like I said, it's got the the uh, front portion so that you can actually connect it to your harvester dragon anywhere around that you want to. This is 13.7 meters wide. So it's only 0.1 meters more narrow than the other one. The other one's like 13.8, right? If we go take a look at it. Yeah, 13.8 versus 13.7. And the other really cool thing about this, whenever you look at your main color here, you can actually select a lot of the other uh, brand colors. All right. So all the ones at the top, those are like a lot of the really cool ones that Chris has put in here. And then you start getting down here. Closs red. Yep. Absolutely. Yellow. Closs yellow. Yes. Closs gray. Kubota. You want a Kubota harvester? There you go. Vermeer. Yep. New Holland. That's the one we were just using. You also have the New Holland red. Then you've got Stars. You got Versatile. You want to get in here. Fent blue. All right. Cool. You got the Fent violet. You've got the Dutes. So you could do that. I'm not sure what Doblet Blue is, but Horsch, there you go. Horsch Gray, you got the Oxbow Yellow, Oxbow Green. Then you get down into here into your other base colors, right? So you want to run a Case IH, perfect. Massey Ferguson, you want a Fent, okay, no problem. Then you come over here, you want New Holland Blue, yeah. You want to run um, John Deere, there you go. Fent, yep, yeah, absolutely. So it, pretty much any of the base game colors that you're going to need for those branding options that you want, they're going to be right in here. Now, there's also some really, really cool colors up here like chrome green. I mean, why not? Why not chrome it out? But if you're trying to stay a little bit more realistic, I fully feel like this is a great, great option for you. And don't worry about compatibility. I mean, all these other mods that you want to grab off of Mod Hub, they're going to work. It's going to work absolutely fine. I mean, these right here, the Kloss Lux Lexian 780. I mean, this thing is an absolute beast. Now, the capacities aren't super big on these. They are bigger than most of your regular base game equipment. And you've got some really cool options for some decals on the sides. It's really depending on how you want your farm to be. Do you want to be a case farm? Do you want to be a John Deere farm? I mean, Lost Lexi, I mean, that was North America also. And you really got two different options on your headers. Like I said, you could do a 10 mile an hour header or you could do the 60 miles an hour. So if you want to go super fast, then what's going to be the limiting factor is the speed of your harvester. Some harvesters only go 19, 20 miles an hour like the new Holland that I have sitting right over there that we started the video with. Others can go up to like 29 miles an hour, 26 miles an hour. So it really depends on how fast you want to go. I mean, and this is going to be strictly for console. If you're on PC, you've got the real speed limit mod. You know, for console players, if you want to go fast, you've got two options here on these headers. You can get the 10 mile an hour header and that's going to keep you a little bit faster, but not crazy so that you're always wrecking into stuff. Or you can go the 60 miles an hour header. I do not recommend going that fast, though, because you're going to miss crop, okay? It, it really wants to be about 44, 45 miles an hour, and then you're going to start skipping the crop unless you've got a little bit narrower header. But Chris, unfortunately, doesn't have the 12-meter header in here right now. So you've got to have the 12-meter header to be able to do that, and that's part of another mod. We're not looking at that one today because you can't change the color options on that one. I mean, we've been playing the game for a little bit over two years now, and some of you guys may not be enjoying the six miles an hour where you're new to the game, and you want to try something out a little bit different than what's available in base game. So go ahead, give these headers a try. Trust me, you're going to enjoy them if you want to go a little bit faster. Imagine, you've got a small farm with some small equipment, and you've put some seeds and some fertilizer in the ground, but you keep running out, and you're having to make a lot of trips over to the store to be able to fill up because you don't have any way of getting bulk material to your farm. What do you do? Well, you're going to get yourself a truck and maybe not just a regular truck, maybe like a service truck. Say hello to the service pickup 2017. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to hit like subscribe and turn on your notifications. Now I know, I know this thing looks like the base game truck and that's because it is, it was taken from the base game model, the 2017 pickup that we have, but this thing right here, the service pickup 2017 was released on May 20th, 2022. 
Now you may be thinking, driver, why in the world are you showing off this really old mod that doesn't really look like it does anything? Because you can actually auto load stuff into the back. Well, not really auto load, it's like bulk load, but you can do three different pallets, not of the same thing, of different stuff. And then you got this version over here where you can have herbicide and lime sitting next to each other in the same truck. Guys, these are multi-product bulk fill vehicles right here that you're going to be able to take around your farm if you're on a little bit smaller scale, right? A little bit smaller scale. I mean, you're not going to have a ton of capacity on this thing, but it's a really, really great mod for starting out. Easiest way to find this mod is come down to your mods and DLC section in your store. Go over to the service pickup 2017. You can see that there's only one option right here. Base price is $45,000. Now, there's a couple different things here on the configuration. You can get default, and it's going to look just like your regular base game truck. All right, nothing different at all, just $45,000. Or you could do a gooseneck, where now it's going to actually attach a gooseneck trailer to it right there in the back. Or if you keep going across, you can get pallets. Yes, you can get pallets in here. It's going to hold 9,000 liters of product. So 9,000 of all the same kind, or you could do 3,000 of three different kinds. Now it's only a $500 upcharge for that. Great, great deal right there. Or you can come over here to the liquid tanks. Now this is going to be for liquid fertilizer or herbicide. Once again, $500 is all it's going to charge you. 8,000 liters. That means you could put 4,000 liters in each one of these. Keep coming across. You've got another one for water and milk. So if you're taking care of cows, or you got some other animal that you need to give water to? Absolutely, right here, 8,000 liters. Once again, you do have to switch between the two if you're gonna go with your herbicide and your fertilizer or your water and your milk. You need to know exactly which one you're gonna use here. Now you can go back to a shop and reconfigure this pretty easily, but whenever you're buying it the first time, you gotta know which one you're gonna need. Or you can get diesel, 9,500 liters of diesel in this thing right here. Guys, this is like the multi-purpose service truck that I think a lot of us were kind of looking for. Just didn't realize that it was already released like over a year and a half ago. Wheel setup, nothing really crazy here. You got a couple of options. I mean, you've got standard or standard two. Design, you've got an LED bar that goes on the front here. Or you've got beacons. Or you can get both and back to none. Main color, all your base game stuff, right? I mean, let's go ahead and give it a John Deere green right there with a nice yellow tank in the back. But say, I want to switch it up and run, I don't know, New Holland blue tank. There you go. I don't know why diesel would be in a blue container. I mean, that would probably be deaf, but you could absolutely do that. And rim color down here, same thing. I want to change this to hearty red, like Christmas around here or something. You guys may have noticed, but I got a lot of product sitting here at the shop. I've got everything from fertilizers, seeds, lime i've got a little bit of chicken food which is wheat i've got oats here which is horse food i've got pig food which is just pig food and i've got road salt right here we're gonna go and hop in here you can see i've got the help menu up at the top so what i'm gonna do is go ahead and just start driving along and as soon as we see start filling that's gonna be the first product that this will actually take all right so it's probably gonna only be the last three down there at the end so right there all right so what's it going in this is actually going to be lime right here, right? So I'm going to go ahead and put a 2,000 liters in here because this is how big these pallets actually are. And you can see that I've got seeds and fertilizer down there at the end. So I'm just going to go ahead and drive in front of one of them, probably oh, about here. And there we go. There's our seeds right there. And then I'm going to go ahead and go one more until I can get kind of out of range a little bit right there. And there you can see that we have three different products in the back of this truck right here. I'm going to come over here and we're actually going to unload this now so you guys can see exactly what it is. So I'm going to hold my R1 and triangle. It's going to unload the lime. It's going to unload the seeds and the fertilizer as well. You can see three different products were in the back of this truck. When they come out, they are going to be full pallets. They're too heavy. I'm not able to lift them at all. Guys, that is absolutely insane that you're able to carry three different things there in this truck. Now, another thing that I want to do, I want to come over here and test out our um, other types of pallets. All right, so I'm, I can get the refill car here. So let's go ahead and do that. So there's my little bit of fertilizer right there. Awesome. So it looks like it's just going to throw it into a normal thing. Let's back up a little bit. Go ahead and do this. Seeds, I can do that too. Now, I wonder if, I think this is mineral feed is going to be the last one right here. And it doesn't look like that's actually going to work. Nope, it's not at all. So let's go ahead and back up. And I want to show you guys one more thing here. We've got big bags too, all right? So big bags, sometimes they're a little bit cheaper 
to be able to purchase um, per thousand liters. They end up being a little bit better of a price. So you can see that it is going to convert it from a big bag into a regular pallet right here. It's going to give us probably 2000 liters. And then we, yeah, we're going to go on to the next one. So let's go ahead and go here. Seeds should do the exact same thing. There we go. Yep. It's given me seeds. And then once that's full, I'm going to drive up just a little bit more and we should be able to get the fertilizer as well. You can see right there. All right, perfect. So that's that. And then we've got the tank version here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and turn around here really quickly. And I'm going to show you guys exactly how this is going to work. It's going to be the exact same way. Just come down here and go ahead and start filling up. And then you're going to be good to go. Now, you can't load both of them, right? So it's like a bulk fill. It's not an auto load. So it's not just going to keep going and going and going as long as they're product there. You actually have to engage each one of them with your left joystick by pressing down on L3 but it is taking it and putting it in there. So you got a vehicle out in the field that you need to, you know, give a little bit of a fertilizer to or a little bit of herbicide, right? You don't want to drive that vehicle all the way over here to the store. But well, here's the truck for you. Just go ahead and do it. And then all you got to do is just start driving, send a worker off, and boom, there you go. Or you know that you're going to be running out really soon. Yeah, just send a worker on this thing. They're going to take it over to where you need it, unload it, bulk fill it back into your other piece of equipment, and you're good to go and the diesel option is really cool too i like this tag here in the back 9500 liters guys i'm gonna do jump in here pull up next to your tank hit refuel and it should be going to go so it's probably going to try and fill up your vehicle first if you've been driving it around a little bit and then just back up until you see it again and then go ahead and start you can see the down there in the bottom we've already got almost 200 liters in here right now now, I know you don't probably need 9,500 liters in here, so just get you a little bit and then get on your way, get back out in the field and get that tractor moving again. And to reconfigure this thing is actually really easy. Just pull up over to where your shop's at, go in here, go to customize, and then boom, you're going to be able to switch between the different options that you want. So you got pallets in there right now and you want to switch over to your liquid tank. Well, pretty simple. All you're going to do, pay 500 bucks and it's going to switch over for you. All right, so we'll go ahead and customize. Yes. All right, perfect. Now our truck is set up with tanks in it. Come back over and I want to go back over to my pallets now because that's what I need. Look, it doesn't cost me anything because we've already purchased it at one time. So now I can switch back over to this for absolutely free. So go ahead and hit customize again. Boom. There you go. Now, I wouldn't do that with any product in the back. I would make sure that you have this thing completely emptied out. But if you need to take and shuffle things around, this is a great way. Just make sure you maybe have like a shop over at your farm or be really close to the shop right here. Now, I know this mod isn't up to the standards of some of the other more recently released ones. I mean, the textures are a little bit off on this, but I still feel like it's a great starting piece of equipment right here to kind of help your small little farm be a little bit more efficient. Well, that's going to be it for today, everybody. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and give it a like if you would. Make sure to hit subscribe and turn on your notifications to keep up to date on my future videos. While you're waiting on those future videos, go and check out one of these two right here. Have a great day, night, evening, everybody. Until next time, this is Driver53 signing off.